Today I'm showing you 5 really helpful Tailwind CSS tips that you probably don't know. Those tricks are pretty easy to understand, but they are very effective and they will help you to use Tailwind CSS like a pro. Welcome back Codebreakers! I'm Lucas and if you're interested in Tailwind, make sure to check out my other videos on Tailwind CSS as well. You don't need to add Tailwind classes to pretty much everything. Instead, delegate classes to parent elements. This is a great approach that helps you to keep your markup clean, simple and readable. And it also makes it easier to maintain your code. In this approach, we don't have to add classes individually to the child elements because the classes that we add to the parent elements are being inherited by the child elements. So let's say for example, we have a nav element and inside we have three li elements and I want to give them a color, let's say red. Many developers would now probably add class name text red 500 um, to like so to every list item individually or press Alt or Option on a Mac for multi-cursor editing and then add class name text red 500 like so. But instead uh, we could just copy the style and add it to the parent. And then delete it from the other childs. And now every child in here can inherit the font color from the parent. And if we then, for example, want a different color for only that one child here, then we just need to add it right here and it will override this style from the parent. So let's add class name, let's say text red 100. As you can see, it worked. Adding styles to parent element instead of adding it to all child elements is often a good idea and not only if you work with Tailwind. But be careful because there are scenarios where you shouldn't do that. Because if you for example want to add padding to some buttons that are siblings, you cannot just add it to the parent because then the padding would be for the parent element. Be very careful how you use the add apply directive. Add apply basically lets you apply Tailwind classes in a traditional CSS class. Let me show you how you could use add apply. Let's say I want to style the nav element here. But instead of adding the styles inside the class name attribute, like so, instead of that, you just add a class to the element. Let's call it navbar and navigate to the CSS file. Then select the class and in here we can then uh, use the add apply directive and with that we can uh, add tailwind styles like p20 text for xl and leading normal. In traditional CSS, this would look like that. So this is actually the same as that. Doesn't sound too bad, right? But even the creator of Tailwind himself has said that he regrets adding add apply because it's the feature that causes the most issues. So if you would start Tailwind CSS over from scratch, there would be no add apply. But why is that? Well, I don't want to go too much into the details here, but mainly it's because developers are using it for the wrong things and they're using it way too much. So the main tip that I can give you here is don't use add apply to create a ton of new CSS classes just to make things look cleaner. Because if you start using add apply too much, you're basically just writing CSS again and throwing away all of the advantages that Tailwind gives you. Also, with add apply, your style can be coming from a number of classes and that can easily lead to specificity issues. So if you're going to use add apply, use it for very small, highly reusable things like buttons, for example.
Every once in a while, you find yourself in a situation where you need to use a CSS property that Tailwind doesn't include a utility for out of the box. Or you need arbitrary values to get things pixel perfect. And when that happens, you can use square bracket notation to write completely arbitrary CSS. Basically, that's the same as inline styling in HTML. You probably shouldn't use it too much, but in some cases, it's extremely useful. Let me show you with an example. So let's say we want to make this headline bigger. For that, we add class name, text 9XL. And now uh, our headline has a font size of 96 pixels. But if we want to make it even bigger, then we need to customize it because Tailwind does not offer that out of the box. Now, you could either, for example, go to the tailwind.config file and extend your font sizes, or you just use arbitrary values here. So, you could just add text minus, like before, and then square brackets. And inside here, you can now add your value in pixel. So, we could add 184 pixels here. Perfect. Or instead of peachy blue 900, you could also just say bg minus square bracket. And now inside here, you could add a hex code like 084163. Perfect. Or you could even create a CSS variable in your style sheet and use the value of this variable with this method. So we could store this hex code in a variable in our CSS file, and then we can say bg minus minus my minus color, or whatever the name of your variable is. Besides that, you can also use arbitrary properties to add absolutely any CSS property you can think of, even if it hasn't been added to Tailwind yet. For example, Tailwind does not offer the CSS property text wrap yet, but we can still use it like that. But there are two things you need to be careful about here. First, text wrap is not supported by all major browsers yet. And second, make sure that there is no white space between the property and the value. Gradients are eye-catching and memorable. They add texture and excitement to a web page that's otherwise flat and lifeless. Brands are always trying to stand out on the internet and gradients have been helping them a lot. So it's actually no surprise that gradients are still very popular among web designers. There are also many different use cases for gradients. You can, for example, use them for backgrounds like Stripe, text like on Apple landing pages, or also for logos like Instagram. And in my opinion, they are still underrated. I would recommend you to integrate gradients in your projects as well. You'll be surprised how much difference it makes if you, for example, have headlines with gradient text instead of just black text. And with Tailwind, it's super easy to create professional and stunning gradients. Let me show you. So here we have a H1 headline with a font size of 84 pixels and a class of font extra bold. Uh, now, if we want to add a gradient, we start by adding BG gradient to R. So here we specify the direction we want a gradient from left to right. Then we add from purple 500. And then we add to orange 500. That's still pretty self-explanatory, right? But uh, we want to use that gradient for the text. For that, we just need to add text transparent and BG clip text. And that's all we need for that. Looks great already. Then we could also add via pink 500 here. 
to add another color in between, then it looks like this. Like I already said, super simple, but it makes a huge difference. Tailwind allows us to change the style of an element based on its state. For that, we can use helper classes such as Hover, Active or Focus. So, for example, if we want to change the background color of this button on Hover, we just need to add Hover BG Blue 400. And that's it. You probably already knew that, but what if we want to change the style based on the state of a different element? That's also super easy in Tailwind. We just need to use the peer and group utility classes. For instance, let's say we want to change the color of the text in the button when we hover over the button. For that, we just need to turn the parent, which is the button, into a group. So we add group here. And then we add group hover text blue 900 to the child. And now this specific child changes its style when the state of their parent changes. So if I hover over the parent, you can see what I mean. With the peer class, we can do something similar. We can style an element based on the state of a sibling. So let's say we have two buttons, yes and a no, and they are siblings, which means they have the same parent element. And if we hover over the yes button, we want to change the opacity of the no button. For that, we only need to add peer to the yes button and peer minus hover opacity 70 to the no button. Perfect. But it's important to note that the peer marker can only be used on previous siblings. So if you would add the peer marker to the no button and the peer minus hover uh, to the yes button, it won't work. But if we have another button after the no button, then it would work again, but only for this button and for all the following. Let me also give you one last bonus tip. But this tip is just for those of you who have already smashed the like button and subscribed to this channel. Everybody else, please cover your ears. This is probably something that you have already heard in other videos as well, but it's important, so I want to mention it as well. This tip is called Little Helpers. Make sure to use a cheat sheet so that you don't waste your time remember, trying to remember all the class names and properties. Install and use the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense extension as well as the Prettier plugin for Tailwind CSS. And if you need help or more information on a topic, also check out the official documentation of Tailwind because it's actually pretty helpful. I'm going to link all of that in the description box down below as well. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to destroy the like button and subscribe for more videos like that. And I will see you in the next one. Ciao.